Hi everyone, Miss Pellegrino here. Welcome back from spring break, and let's get ready to dive into a new math chapter. This nine weeks in math, we're going to be doing everything about fractions. So let's start out today with a little bit of review of the fractions that you did last year. To start out, let's do a quick problem of the day to get us thinking about math again. Your problem of the day is Jennifer and John ordered pizza with 12 slices. They each ate three pieces. What fraction of the pizza is left? So I want you to pause the video and work out that problem and then play when you're ready to continue. Okay, let's check your work and see how you did. We know that Jennifer and John's pizza has 12 slices, just like the picture here. We know that each person ate three pieces. So there's one, two, three pieces for Jennifer and one, two, three pieces for John. How much pizza is left? We can count one, two, three, four, five, six pieces is left. That'll be our numerator. Our denominator of our fraction tells us how many pieces were in the whole thing. And in this case, we remember that the pizza had 12 slices in the whole thing. So we can say that there are six twelfths of the pizza left. You could also choose to write this fraction as its equivalent form of one half, saying there's one half of the pizza left. We'll talk a little bit more about equivalent fractions just like this today. Let's get started. Now we remember that fractions are made up of two parts, our numerator, which is the top number, and our denominator, which is the bottom number. The numerator tells us the number of pieces we're looking at. Usually in a fraction, it means the number of pieces that are colored in, in a picture. The denominator tells us how many pieces are in the whole shape. For example, let's take a look at this picture. This picture shows a fraction of the shape colored in. The whole shape's not colored, just a piece of it. The fraction will describe how big that piece is. What fraction of this shape is colored in? What would you say? If you said that three-fourths of the shape is colored in, you're correct. There are one, two, three pieces colored, so that's where our three comes from. And there are one, two, three, four pieces in the whole thing, which is where our denominator of four comes in. So now that we've reviewed the parts of a fraction, let's go a little bit farther. Let's talk about equivalent fractions. Now, you may remember this from last year or from some of our math review pages this year. Equivalent comes from the word equal. Equivalent fractions are two fractions that are written differently, but when you draw them out, the pictures are the same. They are equal amounts. Let's take a look at an example. I can take this fraction here, the same one we just worked with, and I can break it up into more pieces. So let's do it like this. It's like if I had a cake and I sliced it into more pieces. This will result in a fraction that's written differently but shows the same amount. Notice I didn't color in any more pieces, but now if I were to write this fraction, I'd see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six pieces colored, and that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces altogether. So this fraction started out as three fourths. Now it shows six eighths. I did not change how much was colored in. It's still the same amount. I'm just writing it with different numbers. Now equivalent fractions, we can use a picture to figure these out, or we can do it without pictures at all. Let's take a look at the one we just did. If I wanted to go from 3 fourths to 6 eighths and show that those are equivalent without drawing a picture, how could I do that? Well, going from 3 to 6, all we really did is multiply by 2. Going from 4 to 8, again, all we really did is multiply by 2. You can find equivalent fractions by multiplying your numerator and denominator by the same number. Does this sound familiar? You probably did a lot of problems like this back in fourth grade. 
For example, you might have even said three-fourths you can multiply by a different number, three over three instead, and you'd get nine-twelfths. If I were to draw that picture, we would see that nine-twelfths is equivalent to six-eighths and three-fourths. All the pictures would look the same. They would just have more or less pieces. Can you find any other fractions that are equivalent to three-fourths? Try using the same pattern we just did here. Multiply your numerator and denominator by the same number. There are all kinds of equivalent fractions that you could come up with that are still the same as three-fourths. For example, if you multiplied three-fourths by five over five, you would have come up with 15 twentieths, still equivalent. If you multiplied my numerator and denominator by six over six, you would have come up with 18 twenty-fourths, also equivalent. You could have multiplied it by 10 over 10 and come up with 30 fortieths, and so on and so forth. There are an infinite number of equivalent fractions that you could come up with. Another form of equivalent fraction problem that you might see may look like this. You may see something that gives you a fraction and then gives you part of the equivalent fraction and asks you to find the missing number. So how can we do this? Well, we just saw that if I multiply the numerator and denominator of a fraction by the same number, I get an equivalent fraction. We can use that here by saying, what number do we need to multiply by? On the bottom, I see that I have three times something gives me nine. Well, we know that three times three gives us nine. Whatever we do on the bottom, we also do on the top. Because remember, we wanna multiply by the same number. So I'll multiply my numerator also by three and come up with two times three is six. My missing number is a six. Let's try another one like that. What would my missing number be? Pause the video and think about it for a moment. Remember that in order to find equivalent fractions, you want to multiply your numerator and denominator by the same number. For this problem, you'll want to see what number is being multiplied and use that same number for your missing number. <laughs> for example, here we have 12 turning into 36. So how does 12 turn into 36? Well, we multiply 12 by 3. If I multiplied my denominator by 3, in order to keep that an equivalent fraction, I have to multiply the numerator by 3 as well. 4 times 3 is 12, so my missing number, 12. 4 twelfths is equivalent to 12 thirty-sixths. Let's do one more together. 5 sixths equals how many twelfths? Pause the video and think about this one for a moment. Well, we'll want to look at our denominator because we have both denominators here. How did we go from 6 to 12? Well, 6 times 2 will get us to 12. If I multiply my denominator by 2, I have to multiply my numerator by 2 as well, giving me a missing number of 10. You'll have problems just like this on today's assignment, so do them with this same rule. Equivalent fractions can be generated by multiplying my numerator and denominator by the same number. Good luck, everyone, and I'll see you around. Bye for now.